1869. Okay. So obviously, another century has passed. Mm, gears. So we're, maybe we're already in the, in the era of like, uh, industry, you know? Is it the industrial era already? And again, I'm, I have a hard time really visualizing the history of humanity. But like, there's gears, I see. see you know, it's, it's the era of like, you know, trains and pocket watches, right? And people had revolvers, you know? Yeehaw! Pew pew pew! There's cowboys and everything, I imagine, as well. Maybe. That's what I imagine 1869 would be. Anyway, that era was a rat race of innovation and development. It looks pretty modern, you know, but... You know? I mean, it is. 1800s. I, I, I guess it's really hard for me to imagine. Like, the humanity has, has, uh, has evolved really quickly, by the way, in the last century as well. It's just, it's just a lot of a lot of technology is just exponentially just getting better and better. So you don't imagine it'd be that fast, but after a hundred years, you already have you know, you already have a lot of technology available. The smoke was so thick you could hardly see more than a few feet ahead of you. I could compare it to a dense morning fog, but that might give the impression of beauty, and there's little of that to be found as haze. Do you see the silhouettes of several men in the uh, several men in the smoky room? The one in the middle, the one looking your direction, master, was the present master of the house. Okay, this guy. All right, Jacopo, 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 Jacopo. His name was Jacopo, and though he dressed in such a fine attire, I sincerely doubt he understood how splendid the furnishings left in the mansion truly were. I am a faithful servant of this house, and I would not for the life of me dare speak ill of my master. However, this is a time long past. I imagine God would be so kind as to turn a blind eye to a little bit of honesty. I was not terribly fond of my master back then. <laughs> it seems like all masters, except maybe Mel, you know, the maid, does not like all that much. He had wavy hair the color of rubber dried tea leaves, a piercing gaze, and an arrogant smile, and he wore a hat that made him look rather haughty. He put his trust only in money, renown, and rank. He loved only the iron and steel that had revolutionized so many industries. He had not been the slightest bit of love, or he had not the slightest bit of love or care for other people. At the very least, that is what I believe at the time. Take a look around the room, Master. Chickaboo had remodeled it into a recreation area. A billiards table sat in the center of the room, and the downward-facing lights hanging from the ceiling were special made. The light showed upon the dark green stand like a stage, cigars and bourbon lined glass cases installed in place of bookshelves. The cases were always fully stocked, the contents available to partake of readily. At that particular moment, as he had many times before, Jacobo had invited several friends and acquaintances, and they were entertaining themselves. His wealthy, high-ranking acquaintances had a variety of hair colors, from polished brass to a brown of a baby robin to the color of a sunburnt wheat. <laughs> There's a lot of descriptions about hair for some reason in this game. You know, in the very beginning, you know, they mentioned the, you know, the flaxen-haired family and everything. A lot of descriptions of hair. There's also a much greater variation in skin tone compared to the visitors and residents of previous eras. But that was hardly any surprise, for the mansion sat upon land inhabited largely by immigrants. The New World. Hmm, the New World. Well, I mean, because we were in England before, have we somehow moved? Because New World usually means, at least in the context of colonialism, from the perspective of, of European countries, would mean like North America, right? But hmm. anyway, what's the matter? What are you looking at? Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. Ain't no one there, unless you're seeing a ghost. I don't believe in such nonsense. It's an old house of a long history. Wouldn't be surprised if it had a ghost or two. But the place is gonna be haunted. I'd take a princess over a bloody broad any day. A princess, eh? And when she showed up, you have your way of this ghost lay, am I right? How would that work, by the way? You know, when you're like... Anyway. Color me impressed, son. You jump her bones and she didn't even got any to jump. Come on now, that's hardly fair. 
Not much you could do, even do with a ghost. My god, are you men or children? This is my house. I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Just the bugs of a couple old drunks. Pretend you didn't hear nothing. For the love of God. In any event, whatever happened to that printer you invested in? I haven't heard their name come out in some time. Ugh, can we please avoid that topic? It's been quite the headache for me. I thought it would pay off, but... It always sounds sketchy to me. I recommend you pull out unless you want to find yourself nothing left but a nice fat pile of debt. You could have mentioned that beforehand. Ugh, this is killing me. The men's deep voices resonated in the cloudy room. As they imbibed alcohol and puffed on their cigars, they conversed mostly about business and money. Capitalism. <laughs> this is just a key capitalism. Jacob and the rest of the men were a breed known as investors. You might also call them tacticians. They survive on information attained before anyone else by making swift decisions and having foresight. Though instead of flesh and bone, their soldiers were made of ink and paper. To an outsider, this meeting might appear to be a congregation of friends, but in reality, they were observing one another, gathering information and anything else they could use to get ahead. At times, money and information were exchanged directly, and when they were no longer of financial value to one another, their relationship would pop like a bubble and dissipate into nothing. But you know, Jigaboo, you can't be sure this very what you're so passionate about is gonna bear fruit, neither. They don't even know if they'll get finished. And even if they do connect the tracks, will it really be in any shape for people to ride? It's a pipe dream, this transcontinental railroad of yours. <laughs> Having like a, a railroad across the country? Cha. You know, why well, would that ever happen? J Jacobo. I keep saying Jacobo, Jacobo. I don't know how to say that. Jacobo. Jacobo was silent, but I'm certain this was going through his head. You're a bunch of damn imbeciles. You can't see that the entire country has put their weight behind this endeavor. This is why you have so much trouble with making even a few thousand. Even a few thousand, eh? At the time, a great railway was being built across the breadth of the continent. Construction was spearheaded by two large rail companies, in competition for both prestige and the bigger share of this massive national enterprise. The Union Pacific Railroad Company started building from the east, and the Central Pacific Railroad Company from the west. The government bonds alone were not enough to finance the massive undertaking. By the way, there have been some less than pleasant reports about workers dying on the job for the company you chose, Central Pacific. Uh, yeah, I mean how they're using explosives to blast through the mountains. Ain't quite a bang they are. If this gets to be a much bigger of a fix, they're not going to be able to continue construction. Sure, at least put your money in the sure bed of the two, the Union Pacific. It'll cost you to hire replacement workers if they keep kicking the bucket. You're going to have trouble finding more. My goodness. And here I thought you all had spines. You think we're going to run out workers just because a few ate it? <laughs> well... I mean, you know, the industrial era was ripe with uh, worker exploitation, by the way. So the people blowing themselves up, you know, are, are probably immigrants, you know, who are forced to work in such conditions. Not a lot of work safety. Anyway, uh, huh. there's so many we don't know what to do. We don't, we, there's so many we don't even know what to do with them all. There's not a chance that the well will dry up. If by some chance it does, all we have to do is scoop up a ship full of... <laughs> This game. Skip a ship of blacks or yellows, you know? This is the game saying it, not me. You're really getting into it. You won't get anywhere if you spend your time worrying about a few measly laborers. Really, you know, we end up always playing the villains. I mean, Mel, you know, the first story about Mel, he wasn't a super villain. He wasn't necessarily a bad person and everything. But definitely the second one was totally about a psycho villain. This one definitely is like. Yeah, you know, is you know, rich, snobby, asshole. <laughs> My God. Anyway, um, you will get these men done with your labors. This is the veteran backed by the entire nation. Their deaths was honorable in service of their country. The biggest loss is not of people's lives, but of time. The longer a project takes, the more money it costs, the less profit we make. What we seek is rapid progress. Even the methods to attain are messy or deadly. The other man in the room chuckled uncomfortably at Jacobo's distasteful choice of words. Do you agree with his way of thinking, master? Perhaps he does have a point. 
and that great sacrifice is necessary to accomplish great things. And it is true that tragedy often lies in the shadows of the splendor of times long past. Furthermore, the way people see the world changes with the times, so I hesitate to criticize him too severely. Now, as I am sure you have already picked up on, he was an investor that put money to a railroad, 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 railroad. I'll say that wrong. Railroad company. He also possessed several crude oil refineries, riding on the world's second wave of industrial development. The mansion too bustled a life in a way it never had before. Dozens of maids, including me, gardeners, chefs, sculptors, and artists. At times, we even had writers coming in out of the house. There was a rarely a moment of silence. However, I was not terribly fond of the hustle and bustle personally. But please do not get me wrong. I'm hardly opposed to the mansion being cheerful. It was just, how should I put it? The splendor of the time seemed superficial, heartless. It was as though everyone was being rushed along by some unknown invisible force. Ah yes, um, Adam Smith, you see? The invisible hand of the market? No. Anyway, part of it was, I expect, caused by the groovy divide between those standing at the top and sitting at the bottom. Or perhaps, the mansion was simply taking after its master. There's no time to waste. Everything is resting upon the success of this project. Whatever it takes, I'll be sure it happens. I need more money and more power. Suddenly, a restrained knock on the door stopped his train of thought. From beyond the door came a woman's voice, gentle as a soft spring breeze. Pardon me, I have made some tea. May I offer anyone a cup? There you go, she's a maid again by the way. Somehow she lived? I guess? Also, I wonder if she's still blind. I don't know. Her hair grew back though, <laughs> at least. When the door opened, in it stood a beautiful woman with a pure white hair. It was indeed her. Are you surprised? This is happening like the second time technically. Or did you anticipate her appearance? Though she was not the same age and dressed differently, the white-haired girl whom you saw fall into the hands of misfortune in the era of roses and the era of beasts. Well, I guess I, she didn't. Well, I mean, I imagine in the era of the beast though, she just literally died. Um, you know, like the Mel story, however, she didn't really die. It's just they just kind of broke up. You know, that's it. It wasn't too bad. Anyway, it was also present. In, she was also present in this era of innovation. Furthermore, she was Jacopo's wife. Hmm. Jacopo. I, I just want to say Jacob, you know, but it's not, it's not Jacob, it's Jacopo. Jacopo? It's a weird name, I don't know. I, I've never seen a Jacopo before. A tea? I don't recall asking for that. Where were you asked to make it? I wasn't. I wasn't, but I had these leaves, the most wonderful aroma, and I thought you might enjoy. Shut your trap and know your place. What do you think we have all these maids for? Hey now, no need to treat your lady like that. She was just trying to be courteous. These are my personal affairs. Please keep your comments to yourself. His friends were unsure how to react, but ultimately nobody stepped up, stepped up to stop Jacopo. They merely shrugged, tossing glances at one another. Jacopo stomped the right over to the white-haired girl. He then grabbed her by the arm and dragged her from the den. Okay, this guy's an asshole. So many ways. Cause just, you know, the last guy was unsympathetic, but at the very least, you know, there's there's some semblance of like maybe he could redeem himself. This guy's like, you know, it's in incredibly unsymp it's unsympathetic. I just want him to die right now. You know, hurry up and kill him. Um, even though, well, actually, usually when misfortune befalls upon the mansion, though, not necessarily the the master, you know, dies or anything. In fact, all the masters kind of survived. Mel just was depressed. Um, um, and uh, Yukimasa just went on a killing spree, so he just kind of had the time of his life, really. So I don't know, not necessarily that Jacob will guess his, get his just desserts, but I don't know. What the hell do you think you're doing? I've told you time and again to stay away from that room unless absolutely necessary. I'm sorry, but um, I made tea and... Shut up about the tea already! You think we're having tea parties in there like a bunch of prissy nobles? I'm sorry. If you really feel so bad, don't go in there in the first place. Get the hell back to your room. I meant no harm. It's just... I'm your wife. 
I thought it would be nice if I could do something. Like I've told you, that's not your job. Don't show yourself in front of the other men. I have nothing else to say to you. Got it? Now scram. Six alive. First them, now you. Striving me up the wall. What is it? I told you to get out of here. Right. But I'm... Um, what? When will you spend time with me next? It's been some time since we last went out together. But we don't even have to go out. Just having dinner together would... <sighs> How many times are you going to make me repeat myself, you worthless tramp? Are those ears only for show? <laughs> oh my God. Go back to your goddamn room. My apologies. Okay. Looking utterly downtrodden, the white-haired girl bade her departure. Such a piteous sight she was. As he watched her go, Jacobo merely snorted. Just think about the way he behaved then angers me. I have little fondness for men who not treat their spouses with respect. So as you can see, the white-haired girl was in hardly a joyous situation. She was devoted to Jacobo and tried to do whatever she could for him. But he not only brushed her aside, he did so in an insulting, deliberately hurtful manner. They were far from picturesque partners. You wonder then, Master, why she married him. Yeah, actually I was. In my head, I was like, why, why do you marry such an asshole? The answer to that question will come to light in time. For now, let us follow her. Okay. I guess for... Circumstances, maybe. That uh, she married him. Looking down dejectedly at the undrunken tea, the white-haired girl walked alone down the corridor. Though its calming scent filled the air, there was nobody around to have their heart warmed by it. Nor was there anyone to alleviate her loneliness. Despite being the master's wife, the maids who crossed her path from the hall said nary a word to her. As a matter of fact... Oh dear, I beg your pardon, madam. Oh, it's fine. One even bumped into her, stifling a laugh as she tried it off. In all likelihood, he, she had done it intentionally. The poor white-haired girl who had fallen to the floor stared helplessly at the broken cups. The tea she had made for her husband was forming a stain in the carpet. The maid's behavior toward the mistress of the house was absolutely un unacceptable. Nonetheless, it was commonplace, all because of the way Jacopo treated her. The more the man of the house acted cruel to her, the less way her position as his wife held to the servants. Day in day out, the maids worked busily, offered little opportunity for leisure, so they would naturally have accumulated quite a bit of stress, as she became the target for them to let off the steam. Not directly, but through a more subdued kind of harassment from the shadows. She must have felt quite miserable. I imagine she would have been better off as one of the maids. On the surface, and in front of the others, they show respect for her as Jacob's bride, but behind closed doors, they acted very much the opposite. The disparity between the treatment she received around others, the treatment she was supposed to receive at all times, and the way she was actually treated made the abuse that much more worse. And furthermore, as you have seen through the other doors, Master, she was a very reserved young woman. She could neither raise her voice in, in reprimand or raise her hand in retaliation. I have to get this cleaned up. She extended her spindly fingers toward the shards of shattered porcelain. Ah. But even the broken cup seemed to have no concern to spare for her. Its shattered edge cut her fingertip when she made to pick it up. A trickle of warm red blood ran across her unearthly white skin. As painful a sight as it was, it had sort of a taboo beauty to it. Okay, that's a weird way to describe it. The blood spilling from her fingers showed no signs of slowing down. She clenched her hand into her fist, let out a sigh, and went back to collecting the shards of porcelain. The way she did. Madam, madam! What's the matter? Oh, madam, you're bleeding! While all the other maids ignored her, one came running over, shouting into the white haired girl's side. Okay. Probably Maria. You know, Ma Mar Maria is probably the only good person here. Probably. We need to get that clean and badge up. Oh, you don't need to pick that up. That's not your job, madam. It's alright, Maria. That's not much to pick up. It is not at all all right. And the rest of you, why are you just standing there? Your boss's wife is on her hands and knees. You're not even lifting a finger to help her. You disgust me. Maria, it's fine, really. Oh, madam. If you weren't so timid, this wouldn't happen. 
You're allowed to yell at them, you know? It's alright, really. I'm, uh... It's my fault. Anyway, we should get that finger taken care of. Let's get back to your room, okay? I put the broken cups in the spill. As I said, that's the maid's work. Oh, come on, let's go. Okay. And the rest of you, get this mess cleaned up. She roared like the wind in the thunderstorm. The other maid stood there dumbfounded, watching as she and the white-haired girl disappeared down the hall. But they were soon frowning and grumbling to one another. She thinks she's gonna act real high and mighty just because the master's fond of her. Grumble, grumble. The woman's name was Maria, as she was one of the maids. And she was the one person in the mansion the white-haired girl could think of as an ally. Though her husband paid no mind, and the maids made her life miserable, just one person, Maria, treated her with respect and kindness. And I'm sure you can really imagine just how much of a lifesaver that was for her. I too found myself somewhat relieved that Maria was there for her. Being a servant of this house, I was also of the maids working there at the time. However, I was unable to involve myself to any great degree in her fate. This meant there was little I could do to assist her, even in times of pain and unpleasantness. The best I could do was pray that Maria would continue to lend the white-haired girl her hand. And that does it. Thank you, Maria. You're always such a big help. Oh no, no need to thank me. I just did what any good maid should do. <laughs> no one else in the room. Uh, no one else is in the room, you know. Oh, right. They can drop the act. Man, I just can't get used to talking all stuffy. I'm out there doing my best, but the head maid still spouting stuff like, "No matter speak is improper for a servant." Every single time we meet. Okay, I don't know how. <laughs> I I assume in. I don't know how. I don't know what what she means by dropping the act. Does she have some kind of accent, maybe? Imagine maybe in Japanese, again, because this is originally in Japanese, maybe she talks in like a, a a certain type of dialect. You know, I don't know. I, I'm assuming maybe, you know, I was maybe like the equivalent of like a southern accent. Yeah, that's all. What the, that's what they always do in like an a English dub of an anime. When they have like a dialect, they just just have like, a, you know, go like, yeehaw! You know? Every single time we meet. Yeesh, come on, just shove it, would ya? You're a damn creep. <laughs> no, no, you mustn't speak of her like that. Sorry, sorry, slip of the tongue. She just kind of give me, gives me the willies, you know? Speaking of, you dropped the stuff you talked to, madam. Kind of awkward if only one of us is acting casual, you know? This is normal for me. If I attempted to talk like you, I would freeze up out of nervousness. This is my, my casual. Hm, fair enough. Guess that's what happens when you're raised well. I like it though, has a very regal feel about it. I don't think my upbringing is the only factor. Uh, but you know, upbringing is important. But for a whole lot more than money, I say. I suppose. Thank you, Maria. You're always so compassionate. You betcha. They don't call me the Virgin Mary for nothing. I practically bleed compassion. <laughs> uh, you know, that might be true. You very well could be the reincarnation of the Mother of God. <laughs> no, no, no. You're supposed to laugh at that. That was a joke. It's just embarrassing if you take it seriously. Alone in the white-haired girl's room, Mario was acting much more friendly and relaxed as they conversed, as opposed to her no-nonsense attitude in the hallway. The two women were, as you can see, quite close. They had crossed over the wall, separating master from servant, and built a bond of friendship. At some point, they had begun to speak frankly with one another when no one else was around. Maria was the only person in the match around whom the white-haired girl felt comfortable being open. I imagine she very much enjoyed these moments of conversation. You wish to know who the head maid was? My, my. Are you sure you want to ask me that, master? <laughs> Some questions are better left unasked for your own good. What do you mean by that? Because I was assuming you were the head maid? Maid? You know, creepy maid? But, no. Uh. I have to say, madam, you have the prettiest fingers. Mine are all rough and dry and nasty. You think so? Mine haven't the slightest bit of muscle. What about as frail as dead branches? Oh, who needs beefy mitts anyway? I still think healthy looking hands like yours are far more attractive. What? What's the like about these things? Women all over dream of having hands like yours. Slender, feminine, and perfectly cared for. I don't know. Just looking at them lights a fire in my loins. 
<laughs> Makes me want to lick every last one of them. Actually, say, can I lick them? Can I run my tongue up, down all ten of those sweet little digits? <laughs> Come on, can I? What'd you say? Stop that, Mario. Seriously. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. This is totally not a setup for like a Yuri relationship or anything. We're totally like girl on girl. Anyway, uh, oh, Maria. All right, how are those tea leaves turned out, madam? The ones you imported? It, it sucks though, because I mean, I usually like Yuri, but like, th this is gonna end in misfortune, however, because this is, this is the type of game that will end in tragedy. So, huh. Anyway, all the maids just adore it. They can't get enough of that aroma. I sure like to get a taste of it. If you uh, end up with extra, you think you'll spare a sip for me? Yeah. Uh, that was, um... What was in the cups I dropped? What? Really? Well, ain't that a crying shame? And Jikapoo wouldn't have any of it. Jikapoo. You know what? I will call him Jikapoo. Good he is shit. <laughs> anyway. God. Why does that man have such a stick up his ass? He went through all the trouble making it for him and... He was busy. It was, it's not his fault. Is he? I mean, playing billards? Drinking bourbon and puffing a damn cigar? It may look to us like they're just making small talk, but I'm certain their meeting has some importance to their business. It was imprudent of me trying to step into the men's world. That's just not right. That just ain't right. I mean, you're his wife. Why shouldn't you be allowed in the room? It doesn't bother me. The, the soundtrack again, by the way, I mentioned it before, but... It's interesting how it changes with all the arrows. This music's pretty, uh, bopping as well. It's like, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's jazzy, you know? I mean, I, I'm not really good with musical genres, but it feels, you know, like jazzy, I guess is what you call it. You don't have to pretend. Here's an idea. How would you like to have some of that tea now? We also have some orange marmalade, which you like so much. I had a scoop of that and a tray of cookies, and, and we have the perfect tea time. You're singing the siren song, madam. But you really should be doing that with him. He will not have tea. I suspect he does not like it. I don't want to get to go to waste, so... Madam. I know it's none of my business, and I have no place at all saying this, but... It's not impossible for a woman to file a divorce these days. You don't have to sit down and take it, not one bit. You're pretty, well-educated, and still young. There's hope, even if you do leave him. There are plenty of other men out there. You aren't obligated to stick with that arrogant jerk. He's just... very busy right now. There you go again. This, this, this is what an abusive relationship looks like. There was a time when he was kind. Uh... He wasn't like this when we first met. Back then, he was a little awkward, but a kind man. Him, a kind man. Yes, believe it or not. There is indeed a time. Say, Maria, would you mind giving me a little bit more of your time? I'll make some tea and we can talk. Alright. If you're telling me about when Jacob Pooh was decent, I'm all ears. <laughs> indeed. Okay. But this is, this is exactly what an abusive relationship looks like. <laughs> It's like, oh, there was a time when he was kind and everything, so therefore, I will, uh, like, uh, I will endure this abuse and everything, even though it's, like, not worth it, <laughs> you know? This is... Anyway. As I'm sure you're aware, our parents arranged our marriage. Before I emig emigrated to this country to be married, I lived in the Misty Island Nation. Portraits of my ancestors hung in the house where I lived. I remember as a child wincing in fear at the sight of them staring down at me. Hmm. Okay, so another backstory, by the way. That's different. She used to be like, the first story, she was a daughter of a painter. And then the second story, she was like a blind girl in like a faraway village, I guess. With a, with a like a, with a mother. But now she's from like, some somewhere else, you know? It seems. Anyway. She has ancestors. My mother and father were constantly telling me to show them respect, as it was their hard work that kept our bloodline alive and well. 
However, they are fighting an uphill battle to do the same. It would have been clear to anyone reasonably perceptive that our house was coming tumbling down. Valuable furniture and paintings slowly disappeared. Eventually, the portraits were gone too. As our house collapsed, so too did my parents' health deteriorate, robbing us of any source of income. And though I was educated, I lacked the skills necessary to obtain work. <laughs> Story of my life. Of a lot of people's lives. Anyway, just as we were about to run out of money and options, my parents received Jacopo's parents' marriage proposition. Both of our families stood the benefit from the arrangement. I had the social, social status, and he had the wealth. We each had what the other lacked. One needs more than money to make in the world. Although at least a semi-reputable name attached to you, you're liable to get laughed out in most social gatherings. I first met Jacopo out here in this country. We didn't even know what the other looked like until our wedding day. To be quite honest, I was scared to death at first. I was so nervous. What kind of man would he be? Was I to be wed to some middle-aged stranger? We were not marrying because we had fallen in love like a normal couple. I knew I was in no position to be concerned with such things. When I thought about our future, I shook with fear. But the man I saw through my veil at the wedding was remarkable. He was young, had strong masculine eyes, and at the same time, he too appeared nervous. <laughs> he was shaking as much, no, even more than me. Seeing that, the priest gave an impish little smirk when he asked Jacopo if he vowed his eternal love to me. I counted myself among the happy. And I still do, for in that moment I experienced true love. You wanted to hear about when he was kind to me? Well, after the wedding, we were given a week to ourselves. I suppose you could call it a honeymoon, though we didn't take a trip overseas or even go very far at all. He looked at me uncertainly and asked, Where would you like to go? I beg your pardon? That's what this week is for, right? I'll consider granting your request, so tell me where you want to go. Um, I, uh, it was all so sudden. Hmph, <laughs> nothing. Well, this whole engagement was a spur of the moment. Normally, we would have planned a trip in advance, but unfortunately, our purpose is served so long as we act the part. You must be disappointed you have, you have to plan your honeymoon as is happening. No, um... What? Speak clearly. I don't like it when people don't speak their mind. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm happy. Even though this is a political marriage. Oh, you're quite the positive thinker. Your parents say something to make you think that way. I am. Um... Well, either way, if you're so glad to be in this arrangement, then hurry up and decide on a destination. So there's a limit to how far we can go. He's still, a, I don't know, he's still an asshole to me right now, but... If you want to take a trip, I'll consider it. What? Is something funny? It's just seemed comical to me that our honeymoon has begun and we're only now deciding where we want to go. Not in a bad way, though. I'm glad our parents didn't arrange everything for us. Perhaps you've heard, but I'm quite sensitive to sunlight and not in the best of health. So it would be rather trying for me to spend a full week out of the house. We couldn't go on a trip, but um, if it's not too tr much trouble... Speak up. Could you show me around town? I'm new to this country and unfamiliar with its customs. I'm rather afraid to go wandering about on my own. Show you around. Yes. Would that be possible? Hmph. <laughs> on a rare bit of time off, you asked me to show you around town. Is that really the most exciting idea you have? I'm sorry. If um, there's somewhere you, you would like to go, I'm fine with that. I will accompany you ev anywhere. As if I could drag someone who just professed to being sickly all over the country. My god, I've lost all interest in the trip. Hello? What are you doing? Hey, go, go get ready. Now. I beg your pardon? Did you want to see ta did you want to see the town? You will show me around. You're the one who asked. Not like I have any other options, so yeah, I'll show you around. Thank you. Don't just stand there, you dullard. Get a move on. Oh, one moment. Wait for me, please. Again, I don't know if this is kindness. I guess you could, like, make an argument that he's a little tsundere, but, you know. Mm. He hurriedly climbed into the carriage he had called for, a look of frustrated displeasure on his face. 
Then, as if he had forgot about me until that moment, he returned, grabbed me by the arm, and led me to the carriage. In retrospect, I realized he was not being very gentlemanly. In fact, as I retell this story, actually, he was not kind at all. <laughs> but I was pleased that he was making any attempt to interact with me at all. I think your standards are just very, 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 very low, white hair girl. <laughs> so... As the carriage shuttered down the streets, I saw so many new things. I had spent most of my time cooped up inside at home, so it was like stepping into an entirely new world. And after that rapid, or after that, the rapid industrial advancement currently taking place, I saw men shouting back and forth as they smacked newspaper articles with the backs of their hands. Extra, extra! I saw corner cafes crowded with cigar smoking men on break from work. It was like the hustle and bustle of a festival. But every festival has its underside. I also saw overworked men, looking like they were on the verge of collapse, drinking water from a spigot on the side of the road. By way of contrast, I wore fine clothing and had a carriage at my disposal. I imagined every day was a struggle for them just to remain afloat. Had I not married the man I had, I too might have found myself in the streets in a similar situation. But it was not relief that spread through my breast at the sight of them. It was pangs of guilt. It felt to me like a life of... Opulence was wrong, sinful. It broke my heart to know that I was living so much better than them. Jacobu snorted disprovingly at me, seemingly reading my mind, then said, The poor man who envies the rich covets his wealth and finds the ambition to make the same for himself. The rich man who pities the poor think it is duty to give them offerings of philanthropy. To me, the latter is far more nefarious. Excessive charity will ruin the man. It can come to expect handouts. Okay, this... <laughs> And thus, you know, we will never give welfare, give all the money to me, and that's it, you know? Never give any anything, no, safe, no safety nets to anyone else, because I could never imagine myself as being super poor. Though I imagine, Jacopo, I don't know, I, I mean, if I, if I had to guess, we don't know yet, but if I, if I had to guess, Jacopo probably wasn't born in a family of wealth. Most likely, he probably, you know, clawed his way to uh, getting rich in the first place. But, you know, it's not exactly a good thing because uh, now you learn that uh, you know, the only way to become that rich is to become very ruthless and to step on the people that helped you in the first place. So, I mean... Well, and then there are those with the wrong idea of pity who let themselves fall down in the same place, mistaking believing in someone make the poor feel better. <laughs> what a joke. I mean, that is true too, though. You know. Uh, that uh, if you just give money to the poor, and that's it. You know, it's just like, it doesn't do anything. You actually have to build the institutions to make them, or I say them, I'm poor too, by the way, but you know, to make people actually um, have a better life, you need to educate them, right? You need to... Invest that money into, for example, schools, you know, or like, you know, ways to like, get people jobs and everything. I feel like the, you know, you shouldn't just simply just give money, but still, you still need to like, put the, put the, um, what, do you, what do you call it? But you put the foundation there, right? But anyway, if you're going to do anything for them, you might as well encourage them to climb upward. I don't know, encouragement doesn't... I can't eat encouragement, Jacopo. Spur on the economic growth and the flow of capital. Man, he's such a capitalist. <laughs> but it makes sense. We're in the Industrial Revolution and everything. Doesn't that, sound, doesn't that sound like the better option? I say nothing, simply smiling and giving an ambiguous nod. He had a point. My sympathy and guilt meant nothing to people actually experiencing hardship. If feeling guilty of my own fortune, I acted upon that pity in the way he had described would accomplish little more than self-satisfaction. He seemed to have seen straight through my very core. This was a man who had built his own fortune through investment, which I imagine required him to be rather astute. But does in a world where everyone is constantly trying to climb higher and higher sound rather exhausting? I personally would prefer to be in a position where I could watch if only from a distance as others climbed. And obviously, I cannot say as much to him. Anyway. It's getting very political, by the way. <laughs> you know, capitalism and everything. Look, 
I just want everyone, you know? I just want everyone, uh... To just have enough to live. How about that? That's it. Just have the basic necessities of life. And then anything extra will be, well, up to them. Sometime later, the carriage came to a stop in front of a shop. As I looked at the building per perplexedly, he gestured to the door with his chin, signaling for me to get out. Lost and confused, I stepped down from the carriage, and before me spread a showcase behind a large glass window. However, lined up in the case were not precious metals or expensive clothing, but machines. At first, I had no idea what kind of devices they were. Have you never had your photo taken before? No, I... I had a portrait painted, though. Are these machines for taking photographs? Portrait painted, eh? You know, just splash back to the 1600s. Where, well, technically, she didn't... Well, she did have a portrait painted, but, like, she wasn't, uh, born then, technically. Anyway. A portrait, eh? Why am I not surprised? I did not mean to boast. Now go on, get in. Uh, please, wait, wait for me. The owner came out to greet us with a wide smile, or with a, with a wide smile, as we entered the shop. Well, if this isn't the strangest thing I've seen all day. You bring a lady in a real look of that. What on earth do you catch this pretty little thing? She's my wife. Hmm. Huh. Well, I beg your pardon. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Just goes to show you never know where the cards may fall. You make it sound like my getting married some kind of miracle. I always saw you as the one to choose money over love, sir. Oh, pardon me. This is very appropriate to say from your wife. Um, do you often come to this shop? On occasion, I need some things for you from time to time. I see. There you go, smirking again. That's so funny. We're gonna have our photo taken, yes? I'm so nervous and excited I've never had one before. And to have it taken side by side with you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Pardon? Who said we're getting our page pictures taken? And side by side, please. You're sending shivers down my spine. But this is a photography shop. Hey, shopkeep. The product I contacted you about, is it ready? Oh, yep, sit tight, I'll be right out. You take a seat. There's a chair over there. What? I'm going to show you something much more exciting than sitting still waiting in front of a camera lens. Oh? Just do as I say. Okay. I sat down in front of a large mirror, which I presume was normally used to check your appearance before having your picture taken. Sitting before a mirror with someone else present was quite nerve-wracking. Out of embar embarrassment, I dropped my gaze to my knees. But when Jacobo returned, I was entranced by the curious object in his hands. Okay. What is this? Do you know what a persistence of vision is? The human eye does not perceive the world 100% accurately. This is especially true for objects in motion. It remembers images for a short time, so if you put a new image in the same place, your eye perceives it as in motion. Um, seeing for yourself will be faster than explaining it. You see the slits in the disc? Look through the bottom one and into the mirror. Okay. Good. Just like that. Bring your head in close. Here goes. Standing behind me, he... He slid his finger across the top of the, of the peculiar toy, causing it to spin gracefully. And then... No. I guess we can't see it ourselves? Oh, no, we can. Sort of, I guess. I guess it's kind of like the uh, the beginnings of, like, a uh, film, you know? Or something like that. You know how, like, I remember, actually, I remember back in, in, in school, in, I think, I was in middle school or something. I drew little flip books, actually, and you would like, you know, frame by frame, you would like flip the book, obviously, and it would be like a little animation, right? So that's what I did, actually. I remember doing that. I did like, uh, well, what I, well, I, I'm not, I'm not a very good artist, so what I drew would like, was like stick people, you know? It was like stick people, like, it was like a anime fight, and then they would like fight each other, I don't know. I basically made my own shonen anime through flip books. So, what do you see? They're dancing. A man and woman are dancing. 
Uh, sounds like you're not having any trouble seeing it. Are they dancing well? Yes, yes they are. It's the most adorable thing. What? <laughs> adorable? That's funny. I asked you to have it modeled after a ballroom dance. Ah, uh, um, yes, it's, it's a very elegant dance. But you see, they're small like little dwarves, which I thought was kind of cute. And they seem so close, going around and around without ever letting go of each other's hands. This is incredible. Why does it look like they're dancing? They're all lined up in a row a few moments ago. Oh goodness, I just explained that to you. It's playing a trick on your eyes. What you're seeing is a lots of different pictures in a short period of time. To put it into words you might understand better, it's an illusion. And also the beginnings of uh, modern media, you know? Like video games. Your eyes are being fooled into thinking the image is moving. An illusion. But they're dancing. They really are. But, you know, it's only 30 frames per second. The human eye can't perceive beyond 30 frames, you see. Or something like that. Uh, they, they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion and not something else? To me, it does not seem to be. I cannot see as anything but two, peop two tiny people dancing. <laughs> That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Ah, you're right. That's a shame. I didn't think you actually would. But it's the most precious thing. <laughs> they look as though they're dancing atop my palm. I was memorized by the strange phenomenon. Pictures were moving after all. Still images had begun dancing before me. It was almost as if God had breathed life into them. He called it an illusion, but I could not grasp that. It was such an adorable, heartwarming sight. I imagined the two were off living in some other world, separate from our own. They looked so happy. I was almost certain they were off dancing in their joyous world. Free from all the sorrow and loneliness and pain of this one. Eventually, the speed at which they began to dance slowed, as if they were resting in their legs. I almost thought I could hear the sound of their feet with each step. Ah, they stopped. <laughs> they could dance forever, they don't get tired. I see. I'm amazed such an incredible device exists in this world. It makes me wish I had gone out sooner, or gone outside sooner. I'm sure someone from a distinguished family, or a, a distinguished house as yours has seen plenty of amazing things of your family. Oddly, I rarely ever left the house. I'm ignorant about the ways of the world. If you had not told me, I would probably never know about the moving pictures. Or the illusions of moving pictures. You like it? Yes, of course. More than the portrait you have painted? Yes. Yes, I do. The painting was wonderful too, but... <laughs> you can't seem to make up your mind. Go on, tell me. Which you like better, the portrait or this? Um... I like this better. I see. He looks somewhat pleased. Hmm. Though when it comes down to it, this is a simple trick only a child would fall for. Then, I suppose that makes me a child, and therefore this marriage is illegal and you'll be sent to jail. Oh, then again, in the Industrial Revolution, child rights, you know, weren't really a thing. Because definitely there were a bunch of children working in factories as well. But anyway, if it means I get to watch something as splendid as two tiny people dancing, I happily fall for the trick. Quit describing us two tiny people dancing. You're going to lose your head that far up in the clouds. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I do not know how to else to describe it, though. It's a toy called a Fenakistoscope, <laughs> I guess. Hmm, interesting. Fenakistope? Fenakistoscope. Fenakist... So, close enough. It was invented around 30 years ago, and the shopkeep make one modern after the original design. So the shopkeeper drew this? He did. A lot better than you expect, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I'm surprised he could draw something so cute. Say that to his face and he'll go red as a beat. What I give to get a little of that? You should, go, you should tell him the next time you see him. <laughs> He's a sweet man. Despite how he looks, you mean. It's not right to judge people based on their appearance. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't take it too seriously. The shopkeeper here loves new technology, 
The phanokistoscope is one such invention that caught his eye. He could trick the eye into thinking drawings are moving. Using a sequence of photos, you can perhaps make it seem as though real people are moving too. If it becomes possible to show those images to many people at once, these developments could broaden the options artists have to express themselves. Not drawings, but photographs? Yes, photos. By taking hundreds or perhaps thousands of photographs, it will be possible to reproduce the world as we see it. This room, people walking down the streets. Hmm. Amazing. It was as if they they would make this, these things called videos, and they'll upload it on the there's something called the internet or something. They're crazy. There's no point in recording boring everyday life, though. If you're going to leave a record, a record of anything behind, it should be the project and enterprise that move nations. Say, for example, a moving record of the opening ceremony of the railroad. That would be something worth watching. And then in time, we expand beyond the mirrored record-keeping technology and find its way to the hands of artists. Is such a thing possible? You must remain still for a long time just to take a single photograph. And that's true. Right now it isn't. Eventually it will be. At least you know at the time you know yeah it is true actually you would have to like stay for a long time standing still you know it was like those like uh, old fashioned light bulb cameras you know. Anyway, I'm simply I'm not simply fantasizing here. Is that so? It sounds very futuristic. Do you what? Do you want to support people who work on that sort of thing? Is that why you're friends with the owner? It has nothing to do with my wants. I merely think there's money in it. The rich star for entertainment and artists create that entertainment. I have no interest in the pretentious self-expression. I just want their money. <laughs> I just want their money. Their money. <laughs> what? What's so funny? You look like you're enjoying yourself. Honestly, it's just about the money. As you say. You know, soon, soon that a rich guy... Pretends everything is for the money, but actually, you know, he has other desires, I guess, or something. Again, I guess you could argue he's a bit soon that he's still pretty rude, though. Still an asshole. And he's pretty abusive of her, you know, in the present day, anyway. At least in this story. Alright, let's get moving. Next is dinner. What? We're leaving already? Does that displease you? No, no, not at all tell you the truth, I wanted to spend a little more time playing with the Fenicus wheel, but I cannot bring myself to say as much. Reluctantly, I approached the owner to return the wheel. Don't bother. Bring it with you. What? But... If you don't want it, that's fine too. Just make your decision quickly. You're making the driver wait. Having said that, Jacob will exit the shop. I alternated between looking at his back and the Fenicus wheel, debating what I wanted to do. And then with a smile, the owner whispered to me, You're allowed to keep it, really? Your husband out there had it made it as a gift for you. For me? A little while back, he came to my shop asking if I could make a phenokistoscope. Of that, about knocked me out of my chair. He's a man who never asks favors. He's pretty damn brusque and uh, got a sharp tongue enough to cut steel, but he's not wicked to his core, I swear it. So please, ma'am, be a pillar of support for him. Okay. So again, yeah. Again, he's like so soon today, but yeah. In that moment, the Fenicus wheel became a precious treasure to me. We had only just married days earlier, and yet he had commissioned it for me without even knowing what I looked like. I was filled with a warm, pleasant elation. I agree with the owner. Jacobo was not a bad man. He merely had difficulty expressing himself. Hurrying back to the carriage, I gave him my deepest thanks. He glanced over at me for a moment, then turned back toward the window and muttered, yeah. From there, we went to a restaurant for dinner. You call this a pizza? This crust is an atrocity. It's like I'm chewing on rubber. <laughs> How can you wave my country's flag and not serve spaghetti? You have any shame at all? Okay, interesting. Okay, so now... Wait a minute. So, Italy? But, like... Well, well maybe Jacopo is from Italy, is the thing. Maybe. And, like... But we're not really in Italy, I guess, or something? I'm not sure. This wine is pitifully unbalanced, far too high level of acidity. Listen to me carefully, the house wine is the face of a restaurant. He complained about every little thing, it was a complete disaster. But curiously enough, I was not at all put off by his behavior. When the sun set, the carriage made its way to a nearby hill. 
The cool nighttime breeze felt wonderful on my skin, flushed from the alcohol, and the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Though Jacopo had complained about the quality of vine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly. <laughs> okay, he's a guy, he's a male Karen, by the way. Just complains to the service staff, despite him being incredibly rich, by the way. So, he's so spo- I still hate him, I still hate him. It made him unexpectedly talkative, even though this story is all about how, like, you know, he's so great and everything, and why the white-haired girl fell in love with him. I still don't like him. I'm with the maid, by the way. You know how the maid said she didn't like him? I'm with the maid. I agree with her. Look out the city. A gloomy town that shuts down at night isn't suited to expansion or growth, but this city ain't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps, and you can hear the bustle of them talking. This is a city that still has plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rising wave of the economy, many, many more people will gather here. More people means more money in circulation. More people in circulation means the city grows and companies are founded and more goods are brought and sold. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what's happening from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives and next thing they know, things are different. No, I wager most don't notice the changes at all. Only those with eyes sharp enough to realize what's happening can see success. I can't afford to overlook even the most minor change. Or midnight? Minute? 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 Munu, manak, even the most tiniest of changes. Basically, is what he's saying. Do you have a dream of some sort? A dream? I'm not sure it was easy enough to attain to call. It, I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call it a, call it a dream. Others might call it greed, perhaps ambition. <laughs> Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. Sekaide, na 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 na. You know, the world's mine from by Miku Hatsune. Anyway, the world, yes, the world. And to do that, you need neither physical strength nor kindness, but money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on obtaining power? Cause. I want to change my country, I imagine. Your country? You're aware that I, like you, am an immigrant, right? I emigrated from an island in the Mediterranean, though not the same island as you. My country is a peculiar place where condor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country is on the poorer side. If nobody else, if nobody else does anything about that, I am one but a few of my fellow countrymen who have set his sights on the new world. They are falling be far behind of the nations. If I find success here, perhaps that will catch your attention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to collapse. You have much love for your homeland. My feelings are a little more complicated than mere love. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I have to remember not to get myself drunk around the woman again. Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. Alright, but um... What is it? Is it alright if I provide you encouragement as you try to attain your dream? I know my presence is more likely to be a hindrance, but I would like to be there to watch as you trek forward. <laughs> I suppose. Do as you wish. Thank you. You have my support then. Um, darling? <laughs> darling? <laughs> it's a shiver down my spine, but not an unpleasant one. I'm glad I have you as my partner. I was without a doubt happy then. His smile, the thing he said, the Fenicus wheel he gave me, they were all undeniably real. And those memories gave me the will to wait. For the days for the day things go back to the way they were. They allow me to believe. Okay. Probably not a good idea though. I don't think things are going to go back to the way the things are, you know, back to the way things were, I guess, even though I still, I still don't think he's all that kind, actually. I think she just has very low standards. Anyway. <laughs>